Hello, welcome, or welcome back. My name is Ash. Happy Friday. I've failed two weeks in a row to commit to posting on Wednesdays. I'm trying to, uh, to post Monday, Wednesday, Friday regularly, and I've failed to do Wednesday's videos. Uh, I'm, getting, I'm gonna get it together. I'm gonna get it together. It's just been busy. I pulled a muscle in my back, and because I don't know how to take a break, um, I keep re-pulling it, or like at least just straining it to the point where it's causing me pain. So I'm taking it easy tomorrow, and, and hopefully over the weekend I will finally be able to heal. But anyway, um, what am I going to say? Anyway, I'm going to show you three looks that I did using my version of the Urban Decay Vice 2 palette. If you want to hear about why I chose this palette, kind of my history with the Urban Decay Vice 2 palette, then feel free to check out the video up in the cards, or as of posting this, um, the video where I built this palette is the most recent one um, after this one. So yeah, go check that out if you want to hear more about it. Um, but yeah, I did three looks with this, and I'm going to show them to you now. All right, so for look number one, I started off with the shade Noir from ABH's Sultry palette. This is a really nice matte black, um, and I used a packing brush to pack that onto my outer corner. I was careful not to bring this out too far or up too high because I wanted like a smoky look without going super dramatic. Once I was happy with Noir, I took the shade Manifest from Beauty Bay's Book of Magic palette. This is a really nice, um, warm, dark brown, and um, it's actually very soft, and it's nice to blend out just by itself. Um, so I used that to blend out Noir and then just soften the edge with uh, kind of a smaller blending brush, again, to keep it from getting too dramatic. I wanted a smoky look but not too much drama. Um, although I was having some problems with Noir, um, I'm not sure what the problem was. I think I was, um, or I think I had powdered my eyelids too much before going in with eyeshadow. I uh, prepped my eyelids with a concealer and then a translucent powder. Um, but when I was blending Noir out with Manifest, it started going a little patchy. So I think it might've just been, my eyelids were too powdered. But anyway, um, then I took Destiny from ABH's Subculture palette, um, and it's this nice army green, grungy olive green, whatever you want to call that. Um, and I took this on a flatter kind of blending brush to pack that into my crease and soften the edge. I'm just going back and forth a little bit with Manifest, and then going back in with Destiny. And then I took a really fluffy blending brush. Um, I put a tiny little bit of Manifest on that. And then I softened up all the edges. I started in my outer corner to, you know, use most of Manifest out there. And then whatever was left on my brush, I took it through and blended Destiny with it. After that, on a flat brush, I took the shade Harlequin from Blend Bunny's Dollhouse palette, which is such an awesome metallic black. It's so beautiful. It's so shiny and glittery and it's just gorgeous. Um, but I packed that onto like the center of my eyelid with that flat brush. Um, I blended it into noir a little bit and I just softened the edge as much as I could going in towards my lid. Um, I did have to go in with another shade that I didn't show on camera. I didn't think about it until after I had done my other eye. But um, it helped me get a, a better blend between uh, Harlequin and this next shade, which is Trance from Tarte's Make Believe in Yourself palette. Um, very old palette, but this shadow is really nice. It's a super foiled metallic taupe. Absolutely gorgeous. I tried to use a packing brush with this at first, but it really wasn't giving me much impact. And I know this shade has a lot of impact. So I decided to go in with my finger eventually and really pack it on and then use that packing brush to just blend into my crease a little bit and soften the edge of that metallic shadow. 
Um, and then the shade that I didn't show me using on camera was Granite from Urban Decay's Moondust palette. It's a really sparkly, glittery, gunmetal shade. Um, it's just a little bit lighter than Harlequin and I needed something a little bit less harsh to get those two to look a little bit nicer together. So I took that in between Trance and Harlequin just to get a nicer blend. Then down here on my lower lash line, I'm taking the shade Crease from Natasha Denona. Um, it's a really nice, like pretty rich. It doesn't look like it'd be that rich in the pan, but it's a rich matte taupe. Um, and I dragged that about halfway across my lower lash line. And then I topped that with the shade Lithium from Urban Decay's Moondust palette. And this is a sparkly, sheer brown topper. Um, all the moon dust shadows are basically toppers, um, but this one's got a lot of like bronzy, silvery glitters in it. It's so pretty. And then to finish off the look, I am taking the shade Barley from Ace Beauté's Classical Paradise palette. It's just a pale, slightly warm gold. And here is the finished look. You can't really tell that granite is there. Um but it is there and it, I feel like it looks a little bit more cohesive with it there. But um, yeah, I like how this one turned out. Kind of smoky, but contained. It was good. And then for look number two, I wanted to go super colorful. So I'm starting off with Void from Kaleidos' Club Nebula palette. It's this rich midnight blue, really, really pretty. I love this shade and I love, I love all the colors from the Club Nebula palette. Um, but this one is really nice and soft, easy to blend even by itself. Um, and here I'm using a really dense crease brush to pack that onto my outer corner and kind of wing it out. I thought about taking some washi tape originally to really cut that line on my outer corner, but I decided to see if I could do um, a decent job without it. And I think I did pretty good. Um, I do go in later and continue kind of softening that outer edge but for now that's where I left it and then on my inner corner I took the shade Cuddle from Menagerie um this you can buy as like a single or they stopped doing singles I think but um I don't know you could buy it as a single or you get it you can get it in their pastel pup palette it's just a pastel pink basically it's like a bubblegum pink but I took that on a really small crease brush and I packed that onto my inner corner. And then I wanted to go, as, as well as going colorful, I also wanted to go really sparkly. So on top of Void, um, with a flat brush, I took the shade Ritual from Sugar Pills C3 palette. And this is bordering on a teal. It's a really bright blue. It's like ever so slightly leaning towards teal. Um, but it's really glittery and sparkly and just really gorgeous. Um, but I just packed that all over Void. I covered all of it. And then on the inner corner, I tried to use a brush to get the shade on the inner corner, but I ended up going in with my pinky here. Um, and this shade is Daydream from Give Me Glow um, from their Pastel Dreams palette. It's a, also like a bubblegum pink, but it's really foiled and shiny. Um, and it really does work best with a finger, but so I just top that all over cuddle and then in the center of my lid I'm going in with barley from Ace Pitae's classical paradise palette that really pale lovely gold shade um, And then I just went back in with some of that blue to blend it into barley And then on my lower lash line, I took more destiny um, that I used in the first look on like the outer third of my lower lash line. And I didn't want to blend out too much. I just used a, a firm like, working brush to do this. Um, and on top of that, I'm gonna angle brush to shade Moss Beauty's Witness palette, which is like a rich emerald green metallic. In the center of my lower lash line, I'm using Teak from ABH's Sultry palette, which is a really nice copper. It's not as foiled or sparkly as a bunch of the other shades in this palette, but it is still really nice. Um, and so I'm just blending those two together. I use angled eyeliner brushes for all these metallics on my lower lash line. And then on my inner corner of my lower lash line, I took my little coral Franken shadow that I mixed together 
uh, some number of months, years ago. I don't remember when I mixed this, but it's, um, it's pretty bright, pretty orangey, corally. It's got a lot of gold glitter in it. And then I'm just taking the really bright silver in this palette, which is Shell Shock from Urban Decay on my inner corner. And here is the final look. Um, I used LA Girls Magic Mint liner in my waterline. I just, I don't really know. It just felt right. I originally wanted to do kind of an ombre like I did with my lower lash line, but in my waterline, and I didn't have the liners to do that. So I just went with Magic Mint. I thought it looked pretty cool with this. And then for the last look, I'm actually recreating, or like kind of recreating and like improving a look that I did way back when this, I actually had the Vice 2 palette. This was a go-to look for me, just in different colors. Um, the biggest difference is that I didn't wing it out. I just kept it contained to my lower lash line. But so I started off with the eyeliner in Empire from Urban Decay, like blended out on my lower lash line and winged out. It's also in my waterline. And I'm putting the shade Ace from Beauty Bay's Age of Opulence palette on top of this. It's a really rich purple with lots of glitter and sparkle. And then on the inner portion of my lower lash line, I started off with the eyeliner from Wet n Wild. It's the multi-stick in Lavender Bliss, I think is what it's called. It's in the description box. And here I'm topping it with Insane from JD Glow, which um, is a light cool toned purple with lots of blue and pink glitters. So, so gorgeous. And then in my crease, I'm taking the shade Crease from Natasha Denona, that cool taupe. And I'm really buffing this out and trying to make it as subtle as I can. But again, it's a little bit richer than you would think. Um, so it's a little bit hard to contain at times. And I definitely went in with a little bit too much. But so I'm blending that out. And then um, to also blend this out and kind of soften it up, I took the shade Truth from the Blend Bunny Blends palette, which is a much lighter, uh, taupey brown. It's a little bit pinker than Crease, and I just used the same fluffy brush that I used with Crease to buff that out. And then on a tiny flat brush, I'm taking Shell Shock again, that bright silver, and highlighting my inner corner. And then the very last thing I did was I took Manifest, that dark warm brown, and I lined my lower, or not my lower, my upper lash line. And to soften that as well, I used that same blending brush I used with Crease and Truth to just kind of buff that out and make it as soft as I could without losing the pigment. Um, but yeah, this is like an updated version of what I used to do. Um, Back in the day, I wouldn't even put anything on my upper lid. I would just do my lower lash line and call it a day. Well, lower lash line and inner corner, and that was it. Oh my gosh. Um, I really like how this turned out, but yeah, what a throwback. Okay, that's it. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with this palette and it was it was a weird it was a weird palette to use um the vice 2 palette was such a special palette to me it still is like I still remember that palette so fondly and I sometimes I miss not having it to just hold and look at I wouldn't use it as it would be so old it would be over a decade old but I would just love to have it to just feel it, to compare it to what I have in my collection now. I just, I don't know. I, I think there will always be a part of me that wants that palette back and like just to, you know, just to hold it and look at it. But I had a lot of fun. It was weird. It was very nostalgic. It brought up a lot of memories and especially with this last look that I did, this is uh, very similar to something that I would do way back in the day. Um, it's not very similar, but I would put the, you know, the colored liner in my waterline, and then I would take um, that same dark eyeliner in the outer part of my lash line and a lighter one in the inner part. I wouldn't wing it out. I wouldn't put anything in my crease. I left my upper lid completely bare. 
Um, I did highlight my inner corner and I usually use Shell Shock from this palette for that. Um, but I would just line my lower lash line, no blending, no buffing, no nothing. I would just smack that on and then I would top it. Um, and specifically with purples, I would, I would use those two shades, you know, the one, uh, Voodoo, which Ace is duping, and then this lighter purple that I can't remember the name of that Insane is duping. And sometimes I would even like, oh gosh, I would do that with grays. I would use, um, Smoke, Urban Decay's liner and Smoke on my waterline and then I would put that on the outer part of my eye and then the silver I don't remember the name of the silver liner from Urban Decay I'd put that on the inner part of my lower lash line and like I would just do that I would do a gradient liner on my lower lash line with purple blue gray gray and silver um pink I had a hot pink liner from Urban Decay back in the day like I would just that was my go-to look forever and doing this made me feel so, like, it almost makes me emotional. <laughs> Cause like, there's, like, not to get all like, philosophical or, I don't even know what the word is, not to get all like, <laughs> not to get too deep in my feelings and make something, like, make a mountain out of a molehill, but it's just weird remembering how I used to do my makeup and like seeing how I've improved and like seeing how I can take this kind of lower lash line heavy look and make it something what I would think what I consider kind of flattering like I don't know it's like I've come such a long way makeup wise and there's a lot of days where I feel like I haven't really improved all that much I really doubt myself quite often, um, like in everything, not just in my makeup application, but in everything, I, I tend to think I'm pretty shit at most things. <laughs> so I don't know, it was just interesting, like doing a very similar thing to what I used to do, but making it better, making it more my style now. It's just weird, it's a weird experience. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I really like how this look came out and it's a nice little bit of nostalgia. Um, you know, younger me was on to something, I think. But yeah, I had a lot of fun with this palette. It was such an interesting one to visit, to revisit. Um, yeah, and it's not exactly the same as, you know, the Vice 2 palette. As I've said, it's, it's my version. It's not meant to be a dupe. But it was good. It was good. I had a lot of fun with this. It was a very interesting one. It was a little more emotional than I thought it would be. <laughs> but I, I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. And I will be back on Monday. I'm going to finally, finally be doing my five looks with Pat McGrath's um, Mothership 5 palette, the Bronze Seduction. This palette right here, I've got it out, ready to go. I'm ready to film some looks with it. Um, so I'm going to be doing that, and then, of course, next Saturday I'll be doing a big review of the Bronze Seduction palette. So if you are interested in that, then please come back next week when I am posting those videos. Uh, but if you don't feel like coming back for that, then I will just see you when I see you. Bye!